Now, as according to Islam, Quran is the final revelation of Allah. Yeah. Muhammad is the seal of all prophets. Yeah. Okay, oh, now, yeah. for him to make a claim that Bible is corrupted as any Muslim or Muhammad seen the original Torah before. If you make a claim to use a counterclaim to protect the interests of the religion that you follow, you have to give me the words that are given by authority from God. Now, if you are familiar with Speaker's Corner, you know that it's a place where people go to debate out their issues, your religious issues. I'm not sure if there are other topics they discuss, but mostly what I see on YouTube are mostly religious. Now, whilst watching this video, there are a couple of things that I came across that I would like to speak about whilst the video goes on, but there is this one thing that I would like to note out. The purpose for argument, right? The reason why we argue, why do we argue? Now I'll be speaking on the purpose for arguing from a Christian perspective, which um, mostly is going to be biblical. As a Christian, the reason why I would debate on an issue is purposely to get the biblical narrative concerning the topic out there correctly. And then number two is to get people born again also convey power now if the purpose to argue in as a christian isn't about any of these but solely to convey knowledge which is to prove to people that you are knowledgeable on a to on a topic or subject then i think it defeats the purpose to why a christian should argue out a point and personally i feel this this is good because now you get a lot of Christians who have no idea how to go about certain topics, watching people arguing out their points from biblical and other philosophical perspectives, and you get to learn a lot, which I think is good. But after watching Speaker's Corner for a while, I think most people purposely go there to prove how knowledgeable they are. Most, most Muslims do that, most Christians also do that. And so let's be aware as Christians that the reason why we would debate an issue or convey a message concerning Christianity out there is to get people born again. Let's begin with our video. I'm making a truth claim. Yeah. And my truth claim is based by observation. It's based by the people I've met. It's based by the stories I've heard. A lot of people who are Muslims can't read Quran, don't understand the little they read, but they were told to believe. And they were told not to question what they read. And I realize that a lot of the stuff they follow does not exist in Quran. Now, the point he made here was pretty strong, and I really admire him for his confidence over here and that he's preaching Jesus Christ. Tradition, that is where this particular topic falls in, it falls into tradition. Now, there are texts that we follow to speak truth, right? So, as a Christian, my truth is defined by what I read from the Bible or what Jesus said. That is my standard of truth. You see, when the message being conveyed isn't found within the religious text, it becomes a problem and a burden to the people because now you tend to, you have experienced something that you think is good for the people. That is very, very traditional. We do not go by that. And unfortunately, in Christianity, it, it has set into Christianity. I remember somewhere in the book of Acts 19, there about, even in Galatians and Corinthians, Paul comes in and then argues out why the traditions of men shouldn't be involved in, in biblical matters because that destroys the church and also brings burden upon the people. If you enter into Islam today, most of the things they say are not textual. It is just something they would call common sense out of, oh, it's common sense, just apply sense to it, it works. It doesn't work like that. Truth is one. and if you are going to go or call something your authority then you should go by what that authority speaks and that should be your truth let's continue 
one of the biggest scam mm. of human history yeah. that ever placed on the earth is when Jesus Christ came in the flesh, lived, walked, preached, rose the dead, healed the sick, touched the blind, fed the hungry, walked on water, raised everything. And he went for the purpose he came for and died on Calvary's cross. A religion that came 600 years prior, 4,500 years after Jesus came and said he didn't die on Calvary's cross. Where did Muhammad get that information from? I don't know. I mean, like, um, he probably made it up like he made it up. Um, like, you know, I mean, he feel that after what I No. The best they did, the best they did was this. This will shock you. New evidence. I've never heard this. So now there's not one Jesus in Jerusalem. Barnabas becomes Bar Jesus. Now, the issue with Muhammad's revelation is quite interesting, especially if you are one person who has studied the Bible for a while, you'd come to realize that Muhammad in the cave of Hira and the uh, message he received from the angel is a bit weird. First of all, you have this angel who comes and doesn't introduce himself, which is so different from how angels um, appeared or showed up in the Bible. He also doesn't know the name of Muhammad. And then thirdly, he is unable to tell that Muhammad isn't educated. And so he forces the message that he comes on Muhammad. Now, if you read the text from the Hadith, you come to realize that Muhammad became suicidal for three years and as a christian i i know that the spirit of fear and the spirit of suicide are all demonic and that was why i said if you have studied the bible for a while you would come to realize that how muhammad received um, the the quran or the recitation was a bit weird and i think it should be looked into he replaced yes so God did something unique. God replaced Jesus, mm -hmm. take him up into paradise, and have somebody resembling him mm. killed. Mm. For what purpose? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a religion, um, Islam. Let go, let go, go to the heart of what is We have a problem there. My brother, listen to me. This religion cannot go forward. No, it's not a religion. It's a because, my brother, I make sure you record. Rome had a record of this man Jesus that was anybody who could tell you crucifixion is Rome carries a documentation that's historical that's historical so when you say Jesus isn't died we go back to the Dead Sea Scroll we go back everywhere now if Jesus never died I'm asking the entire 1.2 billion Muslim in the world who died in place of him God died. the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ falls within something we call an impact event. Now, when we speak concerning impact event, it has to do with events that one witnesses which he or she will never forget. An example of an impact event would be 9-11 to those people who witnessed it with with their, even those people who watched it on TV still have the, the details um, up to date. And you would come to realize that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ went beyond, see, it was so impactful such that it went beyond its geographical location of happening. The apostles witnessed it and decided we can't watch this particular incident go unrecorded and they were willing to die for it i'm not sure anybody would be willing to die for something that is a lie and so if the apostles decided to make this up or the writers decided to make this up then i'm sure they wouldn't have died for it nobody would be willing to say yes truly it happened and then their heads are chopped off right nobody would do that but this is the case where the apostles were willing to die for it and so to have a man show up 700 years claiming that he's had an encounter and based off that encounter jesus didn't die and resurrect rather he was substituted for someone else on the cross we know that death and resurrection wasn't only recorded 
in the Bible or in the four Gospels, which are historical narratives, but were also recorded by certain topmost historians in Rome at that time, in between the years of 90, sorry, 70 to 150 AD. You have the likes of Tacitus, Suetonius, Gaius, Pliny. Well, these people didn't witness it, but also did their investigation and interviewed eyewitnesses who proved that truly there was a man in the 32nd AD who died and resurrected. Not only did these Roman historians simply write about a man who died and resurrected, but also decided to take it upon themselves to study the lives of the followers of this man who had died. And truly, it was proven that they worshipped him as God, as a God who came down in the form of flesh, died and resurrected. And most of the people that worshipped him still in that time, 72 AD to 100 AD, witnessed the ascension of Jesus Christ. You can't make this up because there were consequences of telling lies and also the consequences of telling the truth concerning the resurrected Jesus was punishable by death. And that was what the apostles did. We have most of the apostolic fathers dying simply because they also believed this truth. And so we should be careful how we simply follow certain documents that came later on claiming Jesus never died and was married to Mary Magdalene and all that. We should be very careful. So your question is that, sir, who died? Mm. Nobody dies. Nobody dies. Okay. Now, this is a big problem. What century did the writings of Quran came? 200 years after Muhammad. Okay. Seventh century. Now, if the whole world is to be judged by Quranic standard, why did God wait for so many centuries to bring a book forward to judge a generation that has never lived in its time? Are you sure God never lived? These, these are reality questions. No, 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 no. They make a claim. They make a claim. No, 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 no. These guys are so knowledgeable. You know, be, you could tell he's been doing this for so long, and so he knows how to bring out the questions in order that the argument would be dismantled. Like they've been doing this for so long. Sir. They, they, they make a, a truth statement. Jesus never died. They said Jesus was so perfect. He was the only human being that has never been touched by shaitan. Even the mother of Jesus, Mary, is higher than Muhammad's mother. Even the Quran gave Mary a chapter for herself. Why is Jesus never killed? Are, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, man, Are we ready? Yes, sir. The foundation of the argument is this. <laughs> Muhammad says he is the seal of all prophets. <laughs> Never met them, don't know of them, don't know where they live. Who did, Mo did, Mo did Muhammad met Moses in person? No. Did Moses did Muhammad met do you know the answer to Sir, as God, God, as God to Quran, did Muhammad meet Moses in person? No. no. So, 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 you don't ask the question with a question. I'm asking you a fact, a direct question. Because Muhammad never lived in the lifetime of these men. Never. Okay. Now, the claim, um, the claim, the claim you make, brother, let's talk consciously. The claim that you made was this. This man, Jesus, was preached off spoken of let me tell you how deep it went the angel appeared to joseph and told him the wife you have soon to be married to will be pregnant but don't be disarrayed it's not anything bad she's going to produce a holy son into the world never before a human being comes from a virgin who has never a woman has never been touched by a man now this was spoken of in context long before in the book long in the book of isaiah long before when this baby was born in bethlehem something uniquely happened all the wise men priests and pharisees of that time were given a sign for them to know 
where the baby was and what is going to happen with that child. They followed the star to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem and they saw him, what did they do? They fell down and they worshipped him. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Now, why would God allow Jesus to say, I am the father of one without correcting him? Why does God allow Jesus to raise the dead without correcting him? Why did God didn't allow Jesus to touch the blind and the see without correcting him? And where in Bible did Jesus ask permission? This was why the Jews were after him because he was making himself equal to God. I can answer him now. I will answer him now. Who is Jesus praying to? When Jesus went into the wilderness, I'm going to answer your question now. This, sorry, this is deep. Nothing gets to me. Yeah, yeah. Hold, hold a minute. Hold a minute. We're getting there. We're getting there. When Jesus was brought. Sorry. What? Are, are we having a conversation? Is it, is it the problem you have? They ask a question and they detour. No, sorry. The problem you have is this, and I don't blame you. The Quran doesn't have enough evidence or written doctrines of, of Torah or Gospel or Injil. So you are feeding off the back of what is written already before. Let me finish. 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 When Jesus was brought into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, who went in the wilderness with him? I ask him a simple truth claim, which is documented written. His rebuttal after, after Muhammad says, he came to confirm what was written before. And Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And you don't have it? Documented what? What? What book? King James Bible, Aramaic Bible. I'm kind of confused. I'm kind of confused. I'm kind of confused. I'm kind of confused. Jesus claimed to be God because it's done. Sorry, 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 sorry. You're going there. You know, you know. To be honest with you. Who did Jesus pray to? Right? I was just about to tell him. Right, right, right. I was just about to get it to him. But don't you guys say that Jesus is a Muslim because he submitted to God? Right? Yeah, but. Right, right? You I'm guys say that Jesus. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You asked, no, the question that you asked, you said, you said that, uh, who did Jesus pray to? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But you guys say that Jesus submitted to God. Mm. Right? In that same scripture that you guys are talking about, Jesus is, is bowing down, submitting to God, he's praying to who? The Father. The Muslims go, the, the Father. The the father. Get, should I get the scripture out? Should I get the scripture out? He's praying to the Father. Should I get the scripture? 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 Do me a favor. Who is the Father in Islam? We say, we say Lord. We say God. We say God. We say Father. We say Lord. The concept of God becoming a man is very difficult for people to conceptualize. And that is because according to them, they have carved this kind of god in their mind who is a tyrant that is number one a bully number two seated on the throne and waiting to condemn man except man works hard to appease him and so for god to come down as a man is not possible why because god is too big for that now, the Bible comes in and says that God became a man. Now, God became a man. Let me make that easy for you to understand. You have God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, these three are one. That, that is the character or the person of God. They aren't separate. They are one. It is just like human beings have the body, the soul, and then the spirit. We aren't separate. It's all in us. And it will take one to die to come to that knowledge that oh there was another person in there and it, it was through that person that i functioned in the body so you have god the father seated on the throne now all this i might not be able to give you the scriptures here but i'll do i'll do my best to leave it in the description below god the father on the throne same god he's on the throne now he's on the move to embark on the mission that is the son of god Meanwhile, 
if you look on the throne, he's still on the throne. He hasn't moved. He's on the throne. But you could see him going. That is the son of God. When God decides to show up within our physical realm and put up flesh, we call that God son of man. We also know that God is omnipresent, which is he is everywhere, knows everything at the same time. And that isn't pantheism, right? For God to be everywhere doesn't mean that there are 7 billion gods around. That is the same God. And so for God to come down as flesh is one thing that a lot of minds are not able to comprehend because they try to break that down based off their carnal mentality. And it doesn't work like that. Like I said, we as Christians interpret the Bible based off the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that is how we are able to understand the text that we have in the Bible today. The problem you have is this, and I don't blame you. The Quran doesn't have enough evidence or written doctrines of, of Torah or Gospel or Injil. So you are feeding off the back of what is written already before. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. When Jesus was brought into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, who went in the wilderness with him? You have no idea. Then the question is this, my friend. I ask him a simple truth claim, which is documented written. His rebuttal after, after Muhammad says, he came to confirm what was written before. And Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And you don't have it? Documented what? What book? King James What What Right? I was just right. about to tell him. Right, right, right. I was just about to get it in. But don't you guys say that Jesus is a Muslim because he submitted to God? Right? Yeah, but. Right, right? I'm you guys say that Jesus. Hold on, hold on. You yeah. asked, the question that you asked, you said, you said that, uh, who did Jesus pray to? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But you guys say that Jesus submitted to God. Mm. Right? In that same scripture that you guys are talking about, Jesus is, is bowing down, submitting to God, he's praying to who? The Father. The Muslims creator. go. Say again, say again. The Father. Should I get the scripture out? Should I get the scripture out? He's praying to the Father. Should I get the scripture? 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 Should I get the to God, right? But within the biblical text, it says Jesus prayed to the Father. That is according to the Bible. So Jesus prayed to the Father. Now, the conflicting issue here is that Muslims do not take Allah to be a father. And so Allah cannot be a father. And so it defeats the argument where Muslims say, even Jesus in the Bible prayed to God, right? If Jesus was praying to God, then certainly that wasn't um, Allah. Or if Jesus bowed down to God, then that wouldn't be Allah because you know, Jesus didn't bow down to Allah. Jesus bowed down to the Father. This is the case where Muslims do not believe that God is a Father. And so in that sense, Jesus didn't bow down to Allah, right? I'm going to ask the question again. How much, how much, how much of the gospel, how much of the gospel did Muhammad know? How much of the gospel? How much of the gospel? 23 years of revelation. How much of it did he know? So who wrote it? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Sorry, 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 sorry. For camera, yeah. who wrote Quran? He deceased disciple. Wait, wait, wait. You asking multiple questions. Answer one. No, no, I want, yeah. no but you didn't allow me to finish. You didn't allow me to finish. No, but you, no, you guys just start the conversation by yourself. You want so many answers. Okay, do you want an answer? Okay. Ask the question again. Ask the question again. You ask me the question. Your last question where you asked who wrote the Quran? Yes. Black, 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 it was revealed to Muhammad. 
by the angel Gabriel. Who wrote, yeah. Gabriel. Who wrote, it? Yes. Uh, who wrote it? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? By the Sahaba. Who wrote it? Sahaba. Yes. 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 Was unlettered. You know what yes. Means, right? So they say. I don't believe that. Term, you go ahead. Who wrote? Unable oh. to read and write. Yes. So, okay, so you know, I want you to show me from Quran. Now, this is it. If I'm sending this guy to China to represent Europe, and he doesn't know where he's going in China. In this book, I have a Tanakh in my bag, the Old Testament, I have the Bible in Jill here. The both book correspond with historic documents accurately. Don't contradict each other. One was before, one came after. Now, as according to Islam, Quran is the final revelation of Allah. Yeah. Muhammad is the seal of all prophets. Yeah. Okay, well, now, yeah. for him right. to make right. a claim Good that man. Bible is corrupted, has any Muslim or Muhammad seen the original Torah before? Okay. Good question. Yes. All the Injil. Because, because I'm, all, I'm only able to answer you. Yeah, well, your first question, I'm going to answer you by using this statement. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, okay. okay. And I'm right. What do you know about Torah? I'm going to retaliate with. One minute. We don't need to Let know them who read the question. There's less than two versions of the Bible. Do you agree? No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You know what I did a while ago? I asked. Sorry, sir. Sorry. What did I ask you to do a while ago? I took the Tanakh. I took the Bible and said, read from Genesis 1. What you said, in the beginning, yeah. God uh, created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. And the angel said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Grab me a Quran. Grab me a Quran. He's got the Quran. I'm not going Grab to one for me. All right, well, I'll find that place. We are going to test the flavors of the barbecue today. We are going to test it today. For those who want spicy, for those who want. And in, sorry, 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 sorry. And in. And in. He's cooking yarn, you say he's barbecue. Does that make sense? He's cooking yarn, you say he's barbecue. The reason why I say that is this. Yeah. Now, this is a final revelation of God, mm. the seal of all books, and this book will be judging people who never know of its existence. Mm -hmm. That's what know, they say. Now, I want you to hold this book for me, please. They're scared. Their own book. Their own book. They're scared of their own book. Now, this is the issue. If the Bible has been corrupted, then where is the original? right it takes one to identify what is fake if we can tell the original and you hear a lot of muslims say this simply because they heard it from a certain apologist or some kind of sheikh somewhere who is famous and they take it and they walk about with it without a single proof or evidence to support the claim you hear a lot of muslims also go there are so many bibles what they are referring to are different translations, right? Translations that have been translated over the years simply to make reading and understanding easier, not translations that have been changed or changes the text. When a Muslim says the Bible has been translated, what he is trying or the understanding behind it is that the Bible has been translated into a different text. Which isn't so. The translations that we have today, the New King James, NIV, RS, VI, um, NLT, and all that, are, are the original document, which is the Greek text, being translated into simple English or different kinds of languages that would make reading and understanding very easier. Nothing is being changed. Right. Sometimes you read the King James and there are certain words that are used in there you can't understand. When you read the NLT, that word has been broken down into simple English where even a little boy could pick up, read and understand. And that is what we mean by biblical translations, not because 
something like the boy was going to school has been changed to the girl was going to the farm. No, that isn't it. You could have a text like, and a couple of people being put together are unable to comprehend a simple text. Thus, they become discombobulated. So the original NKJV, sorry, the original KJV could have the word discombobulated. And then in the NLT, you would have confused. And so now the NLT is defining the discombobulated in simple terms so people could easily understand. It doesn't mean it was discombobulated here. Now it's confused here, so it's changed. I have, I have done something unique. Let me answer you. Let's talk with logic. logic. I'm sick to the question. Now, the, the reason why I ask that question is this. Because there are certain elements of scriptures that is documented for a particular reason. Jesus said, after me, there's no other prophet should come. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the revelation of God unto the earth. Oh, let me, let me finish. Jesus has gone to Quran, has gone to Gospel, has gone to Angel. He is the word of Allah. He is the spirit of Allah. He says, he says, after me, they will come the spirit. Sir, sir. Your Bible runs. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me hear this. After me, they will come the spirit. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sir, sir. Go again. No, no, don't say anything. Nobody says anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I've put, I've put, sir, one minute, one minute, one minute. Wait, 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 one minute. I've just placed the fattest piece of steak on the grill. Yeah, let's eat it. <laughs> now, I'm turning it now. I'm turning it now. I'm turning it now. It's halal. It's halal. It's halal. It's halal. Now he's turning it. Now, now, now. Now, what I'm saying to you is this. After me will come the spirit of truth. Okay. Yes. It says that. In the book of? In the book of? In the book of? You don't know either. I don't know. Has gone to the book of Deuteronomy 18.8. He says, can I share with you what it means? Listen to what it goes now. It says this. It was a promise that Jesus Christ was leaving to his apostles. Mm. Okay. He says, for if I don't go, he won't come. He won't come. But when I go, he will come and be with you and mm. in you. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Is Muhammad in you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, what's going on? Look at him. 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 I love this. 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 Yeah, I don't know. The comforter. The word for the comforter. Yeah. In Aramaic, in the Aramaic Bible, what is it? So I don't know. Where's don't know. You don't know. No, no, I'm asking. Yeah. Don't know. The word for the comforter. What is his name? What is that? How is that written down in Aramaic? It's the original Bible, Aramaic. Or what Greek. Is it? I'm, I'm, no, 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 sorry. I'm going to answer him. Yeah, yeah, it's Greek, it's Greek and Aramaic. You're right, correct. Sir, correct. sir. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Munahma. Yeah. Munahma. What does that sound like, brother? Yeah. The spirit of truth is coming, and sir. He, will, sir, sir. he will speak the truth after. Everything you're telling. Sir, 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 sir. Muhammad, everything. Come on, come on, come on. Distraction, distraction, come on. No distraction. No, I can't hear you. He said, ask me a question. Look, look, look. He's getting fried now. He's getting fried up well. Okay, okay, let me answer you now. So, so he had just said a while ago, the spirit, sorry, sorry, and little did you know, I'm going to burst your bubble because you have just burned the steak. You burned the steak. I'm going to show you where you burned the steak. That passage of Deuteronomy was dealing with the Israelites who the Bible was predicted to come was Christ. Christ is talking about himself. No, 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 no. Christ was to come after Moses. He was supposed to come. But these are Jesus' words. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You are placing Muhammad in a century that he didn't exist. Right. No, no, no. These are Jesus' words. No, 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 no. Even Jesus. Muhammad did not exist. And he could not be the comforter in you and with you. Right. He's coming in the future. In the future. He's coming in the future. It's not in that. In, time. in when? In, in when? Future. He came in future. Years okay, later. stop it. It came 600 years later. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, 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 hold a minute. Okay, okay, hold a minute, hold a minute. 
No, sorry. Sorry, sorry, John. So this is a problem. Muhammad, Muhammad lived in a lifetime. There was Torah. There was gospel. There was commandments. There were prophets. Now, no prophets in the Old Testament has ever mentioned Muhammad or what none of him. His, what was his name at the time of his birth? His name was not Muhammad. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry nobody ever made a claim. Sorry, 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 sorry. This, this is where we're going now. I think this is where we would end. You can find the entire video on Soko Films. Yeah, the name is down there. It's a YouTube channel. You can find it there. Um, there is one thing you have to know about debating Muslims and that is understanding the ability for most of them to understand what you are saying. I've, I lived in a Muslim community and so while I was growing up, we used to dialogue with Muslims a lot. And one thing you'd come to realize, like from the beginning, I made mention of influence, how God influences people and also how we are able to tell the influence of the devil within a geographical location or within a person. And one of them is violence, anger, lust, and then the rest. When I tend to dialogue with Muslims, one thing that I come to realize is their inability to control their anger and how they aren't organized. Most of them aren't organized in some sense because they are unable to follow a topic, but they jump from here to here and throw so many questions. It's as if they are not interested in the answer that you have to give. In Speaker's Corner, you come to realize that most people that come around to debate simply do that for showmanship. They do that to uh, let people know how intelligent or smart they are, but not so people's lives could be changed. That is what the gospel is about, to get people's life to be changed for the better. And that is a life lived in Christ. And that is why we preach Jesus Christ to the world. Not so we could come out as intelligent people. And that is what you see a lot of people doing. When I come across people that do not seem to understand, instantly I'm able to tell these people are unable to understand. And so I get my message out there and I move out. The rest I do is prayer. Before I move out, I pray. When I come back, I pray for those that I met or encountered. And that is how I know that the seed or whatever that I sowed is going to germinate. But if we are simply going to make this some form of entertainment, what we saw here was very good. The communications were on point. The, the, the points they raised were very good. And from the Christian brother here, all the explanations he made were very, very understandable. But I personally feel this, it sounded more of an entertainment something to me. It didn't look like something that people can watch, gain certain level of knowledge, and be willing to make certain changes in life, right? It mostly sounded like some form of entertainment to me. And people recording and they posting on social media, it's mostly what this is about. And so for a place like this, you just can't go here with philosophy and come out as intellectually upright. You need power. Aside everything, you need power. And we saw Paul did that. Paul dialogued with people. He argued with people in Athens. And after that, he demonstrated the power of God. That is how most of them became saved, born again, and then followed Paul. And so if we are going to move into the world without power, it's going to be a problem. That is why men ought to pray and not faint. Right. I hope you love this video. If you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, peace out.